Okay, so so row equal three, column equal three. Okay, that should make the table easier for us. Okay, so we want to track uh, the number of loops, and then we want to track. This is probably the most interesting piece we want to track here, right? So we want to try uh, do product track product equal r plus one times c plus one. Okay, so first loop we have uh, an rc rc are here. Okay, so maybe I'll track them here r and c. Okay. Okay, so R and C on the first loop, they are value zero. Okay, so we have product equals R plus one. So we have uh, zero plus one times zero plus one. So then we have uh, value equals one, right? So one, and now we go to the second loop, and we're like, okay, so what's the value of row? Row is still zero. Column changes to one. So then we're like, okay, so zero plus one times one plus one, two times one, two, value two. And then third loop, and we know this one's still zero. Column changes to value two so then we're like okay uh, zero plus one times two plus one so three times one three and then three we're only doing three by three okay three by three so let's do one more so then we get four but by this time uh the inner loop this one here has already gone through its iterations one two three it's gone through three loops so now it's going to start again right which means this one loops again. So now the value of r is one. So we have one plus one. And what's the value of uh, c? Zero. So then we're like, oh, okay. So zero plus one. And then we have two, two times one is two. So we have two. This one's still zero. Uh, we have another iteration. This one's one, so we have uh, one plus one times one plus one, two times two, four, four. And hopefully by now you get the idea, right? So, questions here? So, really, the main difference between the four and the while is just that with the four, you don't don't have to have the var you don't have to add one to the variable at the end you don't have to indicate that so it so then r would go to one um, when that first loop is over the first inner loop okay Does that makes sense no can you ask again one more time sorry like the difference between the for loop and the while, because you could do this with the while loop like mm -hmm. you just did before mm -hmm. but you would have to have a separate line where you indicate that, all right, now row is getting, you're adding one to row once this inner loop finishes, okay. but it's doing the same thing. Yes. This one does it behind the scenes for us. The Python programmers, they're keeping track of the counts behind the scenes. But I mean, here we're just kind of like taking it like, okay, like that, this is how the loop works. We don't have to worry about like incrementing numbers. It does it for us automatically, yes that's the case here would you mind writing out the steps if the loop were to continue to six and seven uh just to give me a couple more examples in this table uh, let me do six uh, i think i'm gonna run out of, run out of real estate that's why i was kind of like uh, i understand let me okay so what's the value of this one one what's the value of this one two right so then we're like okay this one's still one plus one right now we have C plus one, so C plus one is two plus one, so three times two, six, right? Six. 
and let me see if I can do one more. Okay, so now what's the value of R? So this one, C already did three iterations. So now it's going to give control back to the main loop, to this one. And this one was value 1, so now it's value 2. This one has to revert back to value 0. So then we're like, oh, okay, so 2 plus 1 times 0 plus 1. And we're like, okay, 1 times 3, 3, 3. Right? And uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, 8. And then we go, okay, so this one's still 2 plus 1. Let's uh, update the values here. So this one's still 2. This one is 1. And we're like, okay, so 1 plus 1, 2 times 3, 6, 6. And then the last one, this one's still 2. This one is 2. So 2 plus 1 times 2 plus 1, 3 times 3, 9, value 9. And that's how this is working. Okay, that makes sense. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Python's doing all the tracking of when to go to the next loop for us. We don't have to worry about that. Any other questions here? I guess since I did this one, uh, three minutes, I'm not sure if I have enough time for the while loop. Uh, uh, trace the while loop. Let me see here. Maybe I can do just like a couple of them and then we'll continue. Uh, let me see here. Uh, code. Code. <clears throat> okay, so we track loops. We track R, uh, C, and what else? Uh, okay, so let's see. Loop one, what's the value of R? Zero. What's the value of C? Zero. So then what do we do uh, here? We do 0 plus 1 times 0 plus 1. 1 times 1, we'll just do this one, right? 1 times 1, 1. Okay, uh, second loop, R is still 0. C is 1, so 0 plus 1 times 1 plus 1. 2 times 1, 2. Now the loop finishes because we're assuming R and C are two. Okay, so now we're like, oh, so in this loop, this one's one. This one reverts back to zero, and then we're like, okay, so one plus one times zero plus one, one times two, value two, and then we go here four. This is one. This is one. One plus one times. 1 plus 1. Why is this the case? Because we're doing R plus 1, C plus 1, right? And R and C are 1. So now we have value 2 times 2, 4. And that's how the whole loop works. Right? Only difference, we're keeping track of making sure that we increment 1, 1, 1, 1 each time. The for loop does it behind the scenes, so maybe that's why it's like less complicated. I'm not sure. Like it depends on how you process information, right? As a student. Questions here? Yeah. How um, can you remind us how it is exactly whenever you're writing it out um, that a inner and an outer function are going to be waiting for the false statement to come in place? Like, do we have to define row and call outside of this? Yeah, yeah, like here we were assuming that row is 2 and column is 2, mainly because I, I knew I didn't have enough time by the lecture expiration, SAM 40, right, to, to, to do more than a couple of traces here, so that's why I did that. 
I said it, but I didn't write yeah, it. Yeah, right. so yeah, we're assuming whenever that. we're writing it out, would it be um, would it be like at the top of it, or how how exactly would it be written out then? Whenever you're writing it out, like if it's if you have like a quiz, you mean, or I'm not sure, or just like if you want to practice oh, on your own. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you want to practice on your own, then you just like do the same, like just do like row equal to uh, call equal to, and then you can be like, okay, I can start, uh, I can start tracing uh, the loop. And that's the same for a for loop as well. Yeah, yeah, like we we traced the for loop, right? So where is it? Uh, we traced it, right? Row equals three, call equals three. Mm -hmm. 